I am not a sock puppet. I am a half object. What does that make me? This is episode number 64. So it, this has been a roller coaster week, I'll tell you. Um, YouTube, I almost took the channel down this week. That's how bad it's been. Um, let me explain what's going on with YouTube. I got a notice, uh, let's see, Thursday, Wednesday. Wednesday, they put out a notice that they are upping the requirements in order to make money on your videos, basically. Um, when I started with YouTube about, well, it's been 14 months ago. Yes, this is a YouTube rant, so if you don't want to hear it, skip ahead. Um, but I do need your help, guys. Um, and so do lots of other small knitting or just small podcasts. Uh, all, the, all the way around. Um, it's pretty much hit a lot of people uh, with the decisions that were made. When I first started with YouTube back in October of 2016, at that time you started making money on advertisements right away. Then partway through the 2017 they upped um, the requirements so that you had to have 10,000 views before you would start making money on advertising for YouTube. And so in September I hit 10,000 views and so I was very excited and so you saw ads popping up. I didn't make any money off of it because YouTube doesn't pay you until you get a hundred dollars worth of revenue coming off of your videos. So I'm only about halfway there. I think I've got like 57 or 58 dollars is all I've earned at this point so I haven't gotten anything financially off of YouTube but now they've set more requirements up so that now you have to have a thousand subscribers so all of my advertising is going away all of my options to try to earn any money coming in are pretty much gone um, you have to have a thousand subscribers before they will even and and not just a thousand subscribers you have to have four thousand hours of viewing time per year to maintain advertising now like I said I've put out this is my 64th video plus all of my um, um, vlogmas videos that I did my unboxings for all my knit crates all of those videos all together there's over a hundred all of those together I'm I'm only about 2,000 hours of viewing time. So, you know, it, it pretty much is knocking any financial increase to me completely. Um, and it's done the same to a lot of other podcasters as well, because, you know, any of us that are under 1,000 subscribers have now lost any chance that we ever had of getting any financial help from advertising so what you guys can do to help us if you have not already subscribed click the subscribe button down below so that at least I can try to get up to the thousand subscribers uh, right now the last I checked I was at about 445 so I'm not even there and there's lots of channels that are my size or smaller out there so any not just for me but any of the videos that you watch from other YouTube creators um, if you see that they have small a small subscriber list, you know, click subscribe to help them out too, um, because it, it's pretty much hit everybody right across the board, and it affects so many things. Um, like I said, I've never made any money off of YouTube, so all of the giveaways that I've done have come out of my pocket, um, and 
it gets expensive after a while. So I, you know, that was my hope was that eventually this, the channel would be self-supporting so that at least I would have enough money coming in that I could do giveaways and afford to buy the yarn to give away to other people. And yeah. So anyway, that's the end of my YouTube rant. At this point, I am keeping the channel running and mainly it is because of you guys, because I feel like we've got a really a good group of people and we all like chatting back and forth and I would miss you guys. I really would. I, I really enjoy talking on, on Facebook and seeing pictures people are posting and and projects y'all are sending pictures of or, or talking to me on my Yahoo chat or my Yahoo um, email. So I didn't want to lose all of that. So, you know, I am going to keep the channel going, but yesterday was very frustrating when I saw this come out. So anyway, end of rant. You guys can, if you, if you tuned me off, you can come back now. So anyway, I don't rant very often, but that was just, it was frustrating. So on to more cheerful things. We are doing our sock along. Now, I did have some questions this week and I wanted to explain a couple things to people. We are doing the blueberry waffle sock pattern. However, you can do any sock pattern you would like. We're just doing this to have a good time and everybody makes socks. Um, you can enter. We do have a giveaway running on this and I will tell you in a minute how to enter that. I did want to apologize to people who actually put things. They showed there was, there was numerous people who actually either told me they were participating in the sock along or they showed pictures of their progress or they showed the yarn they were using and they put it in the Ravelry group. I just found it this week and I, I am sorry. I didn't want you to think I was ignoring you or anything. I honestly thought that Ravelry would send me a notification when people posted. I thought it would pop up in my little email that people were posting on there. And so I just happened to go in and look and saw, oh, there's people who have actually posted. So I have responded to everybody who wrote in there. Um, so now I know that no Ravelry does not let me know when people post. So I have to manually go in and check that each day. So anyways, I wanted to apologize. I wasn't ignoring you guys. Um, so to enter for the Sock Along prize, uh, the Sock Along started the beginning of January. It ends the end of February. In order to enter for the prize, I mean, you can post as many pictures as you like. I like seeing your pictures. I like seeing your progress. But to be entered into the prize for the end, you have to finish both both socks. So we're, we're doing the knit along to learn, and then you have to make your, a second sock. Because um, we don't want to have anybody with only one sock. That would not be good. Uh, so we want to have usable. So you have to have two completed socks. And take a picture of them and you can say anything you want about it, whether it's the pattern, the yarn, you know, whatever. Say whatever about it. Post a picture of your two completed socks by the end of February. And then on the March 3rd um, podcast, I will draw the winner. Now, I do have a prize now. Last week, I'd said it was probably going to be yarn. I changed my mind. I discovered this week that international shipping is a lot higher than what it used to be. <laughs> um, I got a little bit of a shock. So anyway, what we're doing is instead, we are still having a prize, is I am going to, whoever the winner is, um, will I will gift you a pattern of your choice on Ravelry up to $6. So that way we don't have to worry about shipping. I don't have to worry about any of you guys getting stuck with import charges because apparently some of you have to pay taxes on stuff that comes in from another country. So this way we can kind of avoid the whole mess and the whole shipping issue. So again, the prize will be once I draw it and it is open internationally, it will be for a pattern on Ravelry of your choice up to $6 and I will gift that to you into your Ravelry account. So that's what we've got going on with that. Now, let me explain about the socks because I did have a couple of questions that were asked. Um, here's my completed sock. I finished it this past week and let me show you the toe. It does not have a Kitchener toe. You can do a Kitchener toe, but the blueberry waffle sock pattern actually doesn't have any. And I like that because I don't like the Kitchener. I can do it, but I don't care for it. 
This is a nice rounded toe, which I also like the rounded toe. I don't like sometimes some socks have kind of a boxy toe or a pointy toe. I don't have boxy feet or pointy feet, so the rounded works great. Here is what the heel looks like. And this is what you're going to learn to do in today's tutorial is the heel flap and the gusset, which is this section in here so that you can proceed onto this part of the sock next week. So the questions that were asked, um, what size needle am I using? Now the pattern, got the pattern here, the pattern calls for larger needles than normal for socks because you're knitting with larger, with uh, thicker weight yarn than you normally would use for socks. Um, it calls, oh, I, every week I get fluffies in my nose. Okay, it calls for a 3.75 millimeter, which is a U.S. size 5, and you're using DK weight yarn. Now, I've made this sock before, and I used DK weight yarn. These socks are huge on me. I'm actually going to rip them out and redo them. It's not the pattern's fault. I used the wrong size needle. I did not have circular, like 9-inch circular size 5s when I did this. So I actually knit my first pair, I used um, US size 6. I actually went up a needle size. And then I cut down on my stitches to try to make up the difference. And it didn't work. Um, as you can see, it's a very, very loose weave. Apparently I'm, a, apparently I'm a looser knitter than what I think I am, at least when it comes to socks. Because um, you can see the pattern is real, real stretchy. So, um, when I decided to make this pair, and you can see the big, there's a big difference in these two. And you can see it in, really in the cuffs. So the size I am using, because I tend to be a loose knitter and I checked my gauge, I am using 2.25 millimeter needles instead of, um, Oh, no, not 2.2. I am using 3.25 millimeter needles instead of 3.75. So I'm down like a half, two quarter sizes, so a half a size. This is the equivalent to a U.S. size 3, but I'm not knitting with DK weight yarn. I'm actually knitting with sock weight yarn. So that is why somebody asked what size I was doing. And so that's what I am doing. I am knitting with smaller size needles because I'm, I'm knitting with lighter weight yarn. So just, so hopefully that answered the question. And somebody else asked what brand needles am I using? These are Chowgu or Chaigu, Chowgu? I think it's Chowgu. Um, I think I paid, I got these at my local yarn shop. It was like $7, something like that. I don't, somebody else asked about the needles themselves, what, you know, they, they were saying that, that they don't have, like, good quality needles, I guess they just have your average needles, so do I, I do not buy, oh, there goes the fluffies into my nose again, I don't have expensive needles, I, I've looked at the Luca, or whatever they are, Luca, Leica, Licky, you know which ones I'm talking about, I've looked at those, they're gorgeous. I'm not a. I'm not crazy about wooden needles. I prefer the metal ones, um, but none of my needles are really expensive. I I see people using with these Knit Pro Zings and the um, signature needles, and and I'm sure that they are really really wonderful. I can't afford them. They're just too expensive for you know, you know knitting needles. So. I have bought the needles I use most of the time, and I will show you what they look like, are these. They came in a set of 11. I like the cords on them. I like where they connect. They are not interchangeables. I don't own a pair of interchangeables. I got this off of eBay. They came, like I said, in a set of... I think there was 11 different sizes in there. I own two of them. I got two different cord sizes. Because I liked these so well, I bought, a, I think they came in packs of 11, and I paid less than $10 for all of them. I mean, they're super cheap needles, but 
I use them all the time and I really like them. Um, you know, the points are, they're not sharp, sharp, but these are, these are also larger needles. I think these are size eights. When you get down to the smaller sizes, like the size ones and twos, they're, they're pointy. I mean, they're enough that you're going to hurt if you poke yourself with them. So I don't have expensive needles. I don't, not that I wouldn't like to, but I just, I just don't. Um, so anyway, you know, you can find some decent needles. And like I said, I've checked on eBay and I can get some there. And actually I have, I have some in my acquisitions that I bought that I will show you when we get to that point. And I got those on eBay as well. Anyway, the sock yarn I am using for this, and I have it someplace. This is on the round deconstructed twinkle twinkle. Here we go. Here is, this is the card from it. On the round. This is a discontinued color. Um, and it is, it is a sock weight yarn or finger. It actually says fingering weight, but it's kind of a sock weight. And this yarn comes from Maine. I forget where, but it is from Maine. It just says Maine in the U.S., but it is up in Maine someplace. I have a favorite stitch, which sounds absolutely crazy. But in this yarn, most of it is, is this kind of yellowy color. But every so often, you run across a little fleck right here of red. Here's one right there. And then there's one, this one's my favorite, right here. You may say, why in the world do you have a favorite? I just think it's a really pretty color of red. The funny thing is, is when it first came through when I was knitting it, I looked at it and thought it was bleeding. So I'm like checking my hands thinking, where did I cut myself? And then I realized, no, it's a little, every so often there's a, just a little red speck thrown into the yarn. But I really like, see if I can get the color to show up really well. It's kind of a, it's kind of blood red color, but I don't know. It's, it's just, it's just kind of pretty because you know me, I like fall colors and it, it's kind of a russet, russet color. But anyway, every so often there's just this little random thrown in dot of red. So, um, like I said, I have my one completed one and I will insert a picture of me wearing, well, just one sock at this point. And here's my progress on my other one. I have, I'm about at the week where you, where you all will be doing today. I have my cuff done. I'm still working on my leg. I have, I think, I think I have two or three more repeats of the pattern because as you can see, I made my ankles pretty long because, because this is a fingering sock weight, I've got plenty of yarn. I've got, I've got this much left. So I am going to have plenty to make nice long legs um, on my socks. And these are going to be like slipper socks. So I'm wearing them around the house. So I want my legs to be warm. Uh, so anyway, I'm down to, I'm just getting ready to start the heel flap in a couple more rounds. So that being said, I am going to insert now this week's tutorial. We've now knit between six and eight inches from the cuff to the top of the heel. This portion that we're going to begin now will be the back of the heel, which would be where your Achilles tendon is. Now, if you are using double pointed needles, this is the time you are going to spread your stitches between three of those needles. You're going to have 13 on 13 stitches on needle one, 26 stitches on needle two. This will be the top portion of your, the top of your foot. And then needle three will be another 13 stitches. These two sections, needles one and three will be forming the back of the heel. So what you're going to be doing if you have a nine inch circular, which is what I'm using, is I've actually divided by putting stitch markers after the 13 stitches. I have them in different colors so I know that these are the two sides. And the red one here is my beginning mark for when I go all the way around. This is where I know where my, my rows begin. So what you're going to do, this would be needle number one, and you are going to simply knit 13 stitches across 
to the end of the needle or to the end of your stitch marker, whichever you're using. When you reach this 13th stitch, you are going to turn your work and you're going to knit back across the stitches you just knit. On, so this will be needle number one. You're going to knit back across. These are actually going to purl. I'm sorry. You're going to purl across. But then you are also going to purl across needle number three as well. So this is the entire back of your heel. So again, you are going to purl all the way across. This is the end of my needle one. So I would move to needle three, or if you're on a nine inch circular, you're just going to slip this marker and you're going to continue purling to the end of needle three. So you'll be purling an additional 13 stitches. You now are purling the very last stitch on needle number three. So in this case, you're going to again turn your work. And now you're going to do a knit and a slip stitch all the way across needle three and needle one. And how you do this, you're going to slip the first stitch. So you're just going to slip it. And then you're going to knit a stitch. And slip one and knit. And slip one and knit. And you're going to do this all the way across until you reach the end of needle number one. You should end your last stitch as a knit stitch. You're then going to turn your work and row two of your heel. You are going to slip the first stitch and then you are going to purl all the way across. And you are going to be repeating these two rows for a total of 13 times. So when I finish this, it will be my first row, back and forth, and I'm going to do it uh, 12 more times, doing the slip knit all the way across and then a slip and a purl all the way back. We now have knitted the heel flap, and you can see it here. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of texture to it um, where the slip stitches take place. And someone did ask me, what size needles am I using? I am, an, I am a loose knitter, so the pattern actually calls for a US 5 and DK weight. And using, um, I have done that with this sock that I made, and this is DK weight yarn, and I did use a size 5 needle, but because I knit loosely the sock tend to be just a little bit big and because I am now knitting not with a DK weight I'm knitting this with a sock weight yarn um, I actually went down to a 2.25 in order to get gauge so that is the needle size that I'm using so that the socks will stay on my feet so the next section we are ready for we are going to be forming if you look at this sock here this section here right in here is this section. It is the heel flap. So if you look at the bottom of the heel, you'll see where it's, let's see if I can get this in here a little bit better, you'll see where it's rounded right along here. That's what we're forming now. We're shaping the base of the, the heel. This is the underside of the heel that we are forming. The way we are going to do that is this is the heel flap. I still have my center marker in place. So I can keep track of the, the back of, of the center of my sock. And I am going to slip the first stitch. So 
We're going to slip the first stitch and then we're going to knit 16 stitches across. One, two, three, four. This is stitch number 12. When you come to the marker, just slide it over. So this is stitch number 13, 14, 15, and 16. Now your next stitch is one that's not used all that often. So I'm going to explain how to do it. It is a knit two together and you'll see it says TBL. That means through the back loop. The front loop of your knitting is this section right here that you see. The back loop is on the back of your work. It's part of the same loop, it's just the back side of, of those loops. So where you would normally knit two together and go in through the front like this, in this case, you're going to take your right needle and you're going to go through the back like that. And then you're going to knit two together. You're going to pass it over. And there it is. What it does is it causes a little twist in this stitch right here so that it, it helps cover a hole a little bit when you go to turn it. So you're going to knit those two through the back loop and then you're going to turn your work. You're going to slip one And then you're going to purl eight stitches. So we'll purl eight. There's one, two, three, four. We're going to slip the marker over. Five. Six, seven, and eight. Then we're going to knit or purl two together in a normal. You're not going to you're not going to do it through the back loop. You're just going to purl two together, and then you're going to turn your work. Row three you are once again going to slip the first stitch. Let me move this behind so you can see it. Slip the first stitch. You're going to knit eight across. One, two, three, four. Slip this stitch. Five, six, seven, and eight. You're going to knit two together through the back loop again. So we'll do that one more time so you can see it. You're going to go in through both of them through the back. There you can see it. Bring your yarn around and knit over the top. And you're going to turn your work. The last two rows that we did, you're going to repeat. And what it's going to be doing is causing a gradual decrease. This is what is going to do the shaping. These are short rows. So let's do these next two again together. You're going to slip the first stitch, purl eight, one, Two, three, four. Slip your marker. Five, six, seven, eight. You're going to knit two together. The knitting two together is what causes your decreases. And so you're going to purl these two together, turn your work, 
slip the first stitch, knit eight, one, two, three, four, slip your marker, five, six, seven, eight, knit two through the back loop. You can see there was a decrease here from the, the row before. Knit through that back loop again. Turn your, your work, repeat it again, slip the first stitch, purl eight, one, two, three, four, slip your stitch marker, Five, six, seven, eight, purl two together, turn, and you're going to continue repeating those two rows until there is um, there are the last two stitches are left together on the left side of the heel. So we will just complete doing this and I'll show you what it looks like when I get to that point. I'm on the last two rows, so I wanted to show you what's going on with this. If you can see at this point, here are the decreases. You can see the stitches kind of move in here. It's a little closer so you can see it. And here is the other side. These are what these knit two togethers are forming. And this is the bottom portion of your heel, as you can see right here. So we will do the last two rows so you can see. I have at this point one stitch left over here. I'm going to slip this stitch. I'm going to knit eight across. Let me start with my yarn in the back. We are going to slip the first stitch, knit eight across. One, two, three, four. five, six, seven, eight, and I have two stitches left together. I'm going to knit through the back loop, and that completes the stitches on this side. There's nothing left on this needle. Now let me show you what this looks like total. This is the back of your heel. As you can see, here's my heel flap, and here's the back of the heel. Here is the bottom portion of the heel with the decreases on both sides here. I'm now getting ready to do my last row coming across, and that is a knit row. I'm, I'm halfway across it. So I've already done the slip stitch, and I've knit four across. I'm going to do the other four. So here we go. One, two, three, four. I'm going to do the double, uh, the knit two together through the back loop. Now you will notice 
you have a spare stitch right over here and that's fine that's what you're supposed to have that is talking about the spare stitch on one side of the heel heel otherwise you will have five on each side now what you're going to do you are going to pick up here is your instep here you can get rid of this marker now um, you want to keep this marker because that tells you where the beginning of your rows begin um, for your rounds so between the instep which is the top part of your foot the instep and the heel flap where you finished you've got this gap of space right in here you're going to pick up 15 stitches so you will have a total of 20. now if you're using double pointed needles uh, this would be needle number one after you pick up these 15 stitches you will have 20 stitches on needle number one your instep running across here will have 26 and then we are going to pick up an additional stitches on this side so you can pick up stitches any way that you prefer some people like just pulling them through the needle I prefer using a crochet hook where I just go in through the loops pick up the, the yarn through it and slip it onto the needle now you do want to make sure that the 15th stitch right where this instep right here joins the heel flap there's see these little ladders if I can point them out right here you want to make sure that you kind of go into one of these loops to the side as well so that it pulls it snug otherwise this is going to create a little hole where your sock seam where the seam will be forming so you do want to make sure that that 15th stitch really grabs a good chunk of, of uh, yarn right there so let's pick up 15 stitches and add those to needle number one or in my case because I'm using the nine inch circulars, it's just going to be into the rest of the yarns. All right, I have picked up my 15 stitches so from this beginning marker I have a total of 20 stitches and this would be needle one if you're using double pointed needles now your next step as you go across no pun intended as you head across the end step you are going to be continuing in this waffle pattern so you are going to the first two rows of the waffle pattern are knit across so you are going to knit across these 26 stitches this would be needle two if you are using DPNs and there should be a total of 26 now you are at the, the other side of your instep and here is that space where you're going to pick up 15 more stitches again you're going to want to watch this section right here where your instep joins the heel flap to make sure that you don't have a hole in it uh, so you are going to pick up 15 stitches across just like we did on the other side All right, I've picked up 15. Now you may be saying, what about that little spare stitch? And this is that spare stitch that we talked about because here's the five for the heel flap. Here's that little spare stitch. What you're going to do, you're going to knit right across the heel flap and you're going to knit these two stitches together. So it's going to be one two 
three, four, and five. Once you've picked up all of your stitches all the way around, so you will have a total of 66 stitches, 26 in your pattern, and 20 on each side, you will begin, you'll knit one time all the way around. Make sure when you hit uh, the center section where your pattern is, this is your instep, the upper part of your foot, uh, where the 26 stitches are, you want to maintain the waffle pattern at this section. After you've knitted completely around one time, um, as I said, making sure that you stay in the waffle pattern on the instep, which is where your 26 stitches are, your next round will be knitting 17 stitches. So you're going to knit three stitches up to the three stitches to where your marker is. And there you will knit two together and then knit one. So I'll demonstrate that. I'm now three stitches to the end where my marker is. There's one, two, three, and I am going to knit two together. Knit one. And I'm gonna pass the stitch marker I'm going to knit in pattern, in the waffle pattern, across the instep. I've now completed across the instep. I'm going to pass my stitch marker. I'm going to knit one and then I'm going to knit two together. And I'm going to knit back across to my beginning marker here. This would be needle three that I'm now knitting on if you were using DPNs. I'm now back to the beginning again. This is my beginning marker. And this round, this would be round, a repeat of round one, which is just simply knitting all the way around, but again, making sure you stay in pattern for the instep portion. So row one, you knit around staying in pattern on the instep. Row two, you do the decreases. You will knit needle one to the three stitches before your stitch marker. You will knit two together and knit one. Then you will knit across your instep pattern. And then when you get again to needle three, you would do one knit stitch, then knit two together and knit back to the beginning. You will be repeating these two rows. So you're only going to be decreasing every other row. You're going to repeat this until needles one and needle three each have 12 stitches on it. Your instep will stay at 26 stitches but this will cause a decrease on your stitches for needle one and needle three. The purpose of this is to form this section right here on the sock. You can see this little triangular section. That is what you're going to be forming. It's just tying it back in so that you'll be ready to get, uh, put the foot on next. So this is the section here. This is called the gusset and that's what we're working on. Okay, now we are ready for our works in progress. Now, last week, or the week before, I think one of those weeks, I said, I'm going to finish up the projects I'm working on, and I'm not going to start anymore. Total fail. Total fail. I started something else, and I just dropped it. I watched the Must Love Yarn podcast, and they had announced that they were doing a knit-along for the Hitchhiker Shawl. Now I've made the Hitchhiker numerous times. It's a really fun pattern. It's nice car knitting. It's a very simple pattern to, to memorize. And so I've made several of them for gifts one year, plus 
two of them for myself. So I'm going to insert the pictures of those different hitchhiker um, hitchhiker shawls that I've made. So I'm going to insert the other hitchhiker. Yeah, never. Yeah, so I'm going to insert the pictures of the previous hitchhiker shawls that I've made. And then I'll tell you about the one I'm working on now. So this was a, a pattern I intended to make this again anyway, and then when I heard that they were going to do a knit along with it, I thought, why not? What have I got to lose? So the yarn I'm using, I'm going to cover over the price. I bought this at Madison Wool up in Connecticut, and this is called Zauberball. It's a German yarn. It's made by Schlappel. And it is 459 yards in 100 grams. And let me show you the hitchhiker pattern. It is done by Martina Bem. It was very popular several years ago. Now my pattern, because it's old, is all totally faded. It is an asymmetrical shawl and along this edge here, it has like um, zigzag like teeth, sort of. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like, what my progress is on it so far. And this is what my Zalber ball looks like. And the colors are pretty true too. It's got purples, it's got teals, and it has some deep purple. This it's looking blue, but it's actually purple. So and there's some green. This is blue. This is not blue. This is like a Kelly green that is in there. It is a single spun, and this is a fingering weight. So here it is. These are the teeth that I'm was telling you about. Let's see if I can hold them so you can see them really well. Yeah. Okay, now the colors are again are not showing up real well. This is kind of a tealy green and then it's just transition. You can see where it's changing the color. It's just very, very gradually changing into a deep, like a a, a navy blue. So I'll see if I can hold this. Yeah. So it's just, it's very, very gradual right in here changing. I hope it continues to do that as it, as it goes through the colors. I did see some reviews on this yarn where people talked about all of a sudden it had some shocking off the wall color in it, and then it would go back into pattern again. And people were having to cut that section out because they didn't like it. And it was throwing the colors out. I haven't run into that so far, but uh, you know, I haven't gotten into too much of it. I've only part way through. And I think it has a total of like 42 teeth, but you can make this as big or as small as you want. So, um, yeah, and I like the fabric. I'm knitting this with size three, which is actually smaller than what the pattern calls for, but I kind of like how it is. I don't think I'd want it any tighter than this or any looser. I'm very happy with how it's looking. So that is one project that I'm working on. And then I have my On the Spice Market, and I have made a lot of progress on my On the Spice Market. This is a pattern by Melanie Berg, and I absolutely love Melanie Berg's patterns. I have two of them, and then I saw another one. I forget what it's called. I will insert it if I think about it. I, there's another pattern that she has out. I don't know how long it's been out or if it's an older pattern or what, but I saw somebody made one of them the other day and it was gorgeous. And it was a really simp simple looking pattern, but it was really pretty. Um, on the spice market, let me show you the picture of it. And this was one that one of the first ones the grocery girls did on one of their very first episodes. And that's where I saw it and I thought it was kind of neat. So here it is. And it's done with, um, like gradient colors here, you can do different color, you know, different shades. It's like six or seven different ones. And then those go through this little section here that are kind of bobbly looking. And you'll see it on mine. Now mine I'm doing with a variegated yarn. So I'm actually not changing yarns as I go up. Mine is actually the same ball of yarn. So here's where it begins. 
Now the black is, is a separate set, but all of the other colors are all coming off of one color of yarn. I just thought they looked really pretty together. And you can see my stitch marker. That's where I was at last week. So I've made quite a bit of progress. And this is going to be for my mother for Christmas. So, and it's really, really soft. Uh, the, the variegated yarn I'm using is very soft. And this is that, the yarn that I've talked about that's made with sugar cane that is extremely soft. Um, it's just, oh, I love it. And it's really got a nice drape to it. So I'm very, very happy with it. And so I only have a few more sections. I think I have five more sections of this. Let's bring it this close so you can see it. I don't want to say too much about the stitch and give the pattern away because it is a paid for pattern. Um, cozy up with the stitching sisters when they made this call this the irritating stitch. I think it's fun myself. I enjoy it. This is what the back of those stitches look like. Let's see if I can do it so you can see it. That's what the back looks like. So I'm working on that project. And then I've been working on my other side of my poncho. This is with the Katia paint yarn. And it is a free, the poncho pattern is a free pattern on the Katia website. This color I think is color number 53. Yes, color number 53. I had to really shove this back in here. I had yarn barf going on. The whole center was like ready to fall out. So, um, because I'm knitting from, I'm pulling the, the thread from the inside instead of from the outside, I'm pulling from the inside out. Yeah, it was like ready to come out. So that is the colors and that's pretty true to color. This is like a gray in here. And this is what it is looking like. You can see where I was at last week. There's my stitch marker. And this pattern goes sideways like this. And th so this is where your head will pop out. It's the top here and then the sleeves and um, where the, the shoulders in it. And it only has you connecting like partially on the shoulders. So part of it just kind of hangs as like an open slit. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or not. I'm, I'll sew it that far and then look at it. I might sew it all the way down just... I don't know. I just, I don't like things flapping around on me. I have, a, I have enough with the bat wings. I don't need to add to it. So, um, yeah, I might sew it all the way down. We'll see when I get to that point. But that's how far I've gotten with that poncho. Then we get to my cozy memory blanket. I bet my husband and I had Chinese food yesterday. And we opened up the fortune cookie. It so describes my situation we'll say with my mitered square blanket i'll explain in a moment my my uh, fortune cookie thing says mistakes show us what we need to learn apparently i need to learn a lot i was so excited worked on the cozy memory blanket i'll show you the squares i made before i unmake them all this is what i did this week You'll recognize this yarn is left from my uh, Keeping You in Stitches shawl that I made for my daughter. This yarn is actually, um, I think it's Knitting Fever Chromatics yarn. This is the yarn that I used for the last On the Spice Market that I made. This was some of the yarn that was in um, from the lady on eBay that I got my uh, yarn advent yarn from so there's this and then I had some solid brown I think this is knit picks I think this is just some knit picks yarn from the hat that I made and then this is some more from Paula on eBay then I happened to look if you remember I said I was changing my cozy memory blanket a while back so that it had a pinwheel effect where the spokes come out. Let's see if I can show you this. I'm going to turn it so I can. Okay, here we go. If you look closely here, 
you can see my miters, this is this would be the center of the blanket. And so you can see that the miter here runs this direction. The miter on this side runs this direction. The miter here runs this direction. This miter and everything on this side, all the way across, should be running this direction. Did I do that? Oh no, I sewed it upside down. I actually held the blanket the wrong way when I did it. So all of the squares from here to here to here to here, all of the ones I just did and all the way across this row are all sewn the wrong direction. Yes. I just looked at that and went, oh, I can't believe I did that. So my thought is <laughs> the cozy memory might might morph back to um, all the same direction again because apparently I'm directionally challenged. Somebody made the comment to me that um, that ex they didn't think experienced knitters made as many mistakes. Ding, ding, ding. Apparently I'm either not an experienced knitter or I'm very prone to making mistakes. So um, I thought I would show you this before I rip parts of it out. Um, yeah. But I did weave all my ends in. I did get something accomplished. All of my ends, all of my ends are now wove in. And now I have to all unweave them. So, uh, yeah, that was my, my knitting faux pas this week. When I looked at that, I was like, oh, I can't believe I didn't think about that. Didn't catch it sooner. So now I, I compounded my, my problem by just knitting the next row all the wrong direction too. So, yeah. I'm going to have my work cut out for me trying to fix this this week and get it back to where I was at. So lastly, well, not lastly yet, um, I wanted to talk about the Keeping You in Stitches shawl. This was released officially last week. Um, I didn't bring the gold one upstairs to the craft room to show you this week. This is the one that I made and my daughter mentioned she liked it, so it's, it's going to become hers. Uh, so anyway, this is the Keeping You in Stitches pattern. And I'm, I wanted to explain a couple things to you because while it is lace, it's not an intimidating lace. So if you, if you have had curiosity about knitting lace, this might be the shawl for you to try. Because most of the time, lace is knitted with lace weight yarn. I used to knit a lot of lace weight yarn. I don't. As I've gotten older, it's very hard for me to see the tiny little yarn, you know, because lace weight is like really, really thin. It's like fingering weight cut in half. It's it's very hard to see. Like I said, I used to knit with it all the time. That was, used to be my favorite. Now fingering weight is, you know, because bifocals have kicked in. And so I do so much better with a little bit heavier. So when I made this, I did not use lace weight yarn. This is done with a fingering weight to a sock weight yarn. And the patterns in it, while they are lace patterns, they're very, very basic lace patterns. So if you want to kind of like explore a little bit of lace knitting without getting overwhelmed by it, this might be the thing to try. Because even if you run into a section that you might consider hard, it doesn't last very long because there are 10 different types of lace patterns that run throughout this and they're each are only about 10 to 15 rows so it's just enough it's like a little sampler lace is what it comes out to so anyway this is available on Ravelry um, it is a five dollar pattern however if you put in KC10 in the coupon code section uh, it gives you 10 percent off so you would get it for four dollars and fifty cents so it can be knit with a variegated, which is what this is. Um, it can be knitted with as many, you could do a different color for every single lace panel if you wanted. So you could have up to 10 different colors if you wanted it to. Or the, the way the original pattern is written, it is written for four colors. So um, it's very versatile and you can kind of make it your own a little bit. So, and again, thank you to Yoka and Monica. Uh, for doing my test knitting for me. It meant so much more to have it done by people that are my friends. So um, yeah, I really appreciate that. So we are now on to acquisitions. I only have two. 
if you watched my knit crate, which came up on Thursday, uh, the knit crate video, that is my first acquisition. Here it is. It's two skeins of yarn. They are two different colorways, but they are meant to go together. They are definitely a mauve, which is kind of a grayish purple. So here's the one skein. It's showing up more gray than it is purple, but it is purple. Not purpley purpley, but it's, it's a definite mauve. And the patterns together are called, this is called dry leaves. I'm not sure where they get dry leaves out of. I've never seen dry leaves that are purple, but it's pretty. Like I said, it's a purpley mauve. And then this color is called breathless. And it has the same, right here, is the same mauve as what is in here. So you can use these independently, but they're meant to be knit together so that the colors coordinate. So the colors aren't showing up as well as they really are, but they do coordinate together. So this has some blue, and it has kind of a, a peachy salmon, um, kind of a real light peachy mauve color. Yeah, peachy mauve. I don't know if that's a real color or not and then it has a light blue and then a, a like a medium cornflower blue and then it has more of the mauve so yeah so they are meant to go together and they have a crochet pattern included which is this and since i'm not a big crocheter i think i might try this pattern with it Knit Crate sells this particular Knit Crate box. There's all different price ranges. This one is $24.95 or $99, something like that. Um, they always include two patterns uh, with this particular box. They always include a knitting pattern and a crochet pattern that can be made with this product. And so I might, um, and they also give you discounts as far as for more patterns from these designers. So this one that I'm going to make eventually, I'm not sure when, but eventually, is by Melinda Maser. And the pattern itself has some lace in this section. Has This is like a, it looks like it's a garter. And this is the striping, so I'm assuming it's probably done with this yarn here. And um, that is done with, uh, it looks like some stockinette possibly, and then there's some lace, and there's some pointed edges to it. So I'm thinking that it started with this yarn and then it finishes with this one with the with a little bit more color to it. Anyway, it's really pretty. And I'm happy with this yarn. Let me tell you a little bit about it. It is called Audine Wools. There you go. And both of these skeins of yarn are an 80-20. So they're 80% superwash wool, 20% nylon, and they are fingering weight and each skein has 400 yards in it. So, pretty good sized. So, I got that. And then I ordered a second set of needles. I got these off of eBay. These are Novena Platina. They are nine inch size one or 2.25 millimeter needles and these are the metal and like i said i prefer the metal instead so the other sock needles that i'm using are 3.25s so these are a little bit smaller because i am i am having some fun knit, knitting the socks but knowing that i am tending to be a loose knitter even though i knitted those socks on smaller needles they still um are, are slightly bigger than I, I could have gone a little bit smaller even with those I have little feet big mouth big body little feet little hands I wear children's size gloves um, and I wear like a size 7 shoe I'm not sure what that is in European sizes but my foot from the tip of my big toe to my heel is nine and a half inches so I have like fairly little feet although they fit into my mouth really really well so anyway, I bought these and these are the metal needles. They are Knitter's Pride Nova Platina. Uh, the nine, they are nine inch or 25 centimeters. 
and their US size one, 2.25 millimeters. So that is my acquisitions for this week. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button and help me get close to a thousand so that maybe I stand a chance of getting advertising back yet again. Um, so anyway, uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you to all of my returning viewers. And thank you for all of you that are new. I've, we've gotten a lot of new uh, viewers in the last few weeks. So thank you for checking us out. And hope you have a great week. And I'll talk to you again next Saturday. Bye, guys.